What you doing? Hmm? Oh, I'm uh, reading some news. Good news? Well, not so much. Mostly bad news. What happened now? Fires, lawsuits, arrests, climate change. That's a lot. There's a lot of problems. Is there always bad news? Yeah, it seems like it, doesn't it? Yeah. Is there, yeah, is there any news? good news? Oh, yeah. There's good things happen in our world every day. Things with our family, our friends, our community. But sometimes it feels like nothing good is happening anywhere. And that's what I think about. Jesus, right? Huh. Yeah. How'd you know what I was thinking? I don't know. Yeah, I think about the story of Jesus and new life and Easter. But Jesus' story wasn't all that good, was it? No, you're right. Jesus has faced a lot of bad news, but his story is about good news overcoming the bad news. What was Jesus' good news? The Sermon on the Mount, we learned about that in Sunday school. That's a great place to start. Jesus went up on a mountainside and shared good news with a bunch of people that came to listen. That sounds like a sermon. Sermons are boring. Not for the people who came to listen to Jesus. They didn't just like what he said. They felt inspired to go out and live his scripture. Jesus taught that people who were poor, lonely, sad, hungry, and sick would be blessed. Jesus wanted to, everyone to understand that God's kingdom was different. Different from all the kingdoms and governments on earth. That sounds like good news. Tell us more, Jesus. Tell us about the kingdom of heaven. How do we get into this kingdom? What do we do? Do we have to offer sacrifices? Is there an entry fee? Is it invitation only? Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. And where do we knock? Is it a big door? Where is this door? Are you saying we just ask and God will give things to us? I want a puppy. I need a new tuna. And a camel. Does God know my size? Where are these things God's giving us? Behind the door? Let Jesus explain. All right, let me ask you this. Which of you, if your child asks for bread, will give them a stone? Or if they ask for a fish, will you give them a snake? Wait, no. Never, who does that? That's just me. Exactly. You now know to give good gifts to your children. So just imagine how good God's gift would be to those who ask. Oh, I see what you did there. Nice, nice. God loves you just like a loving parent. God's kingdom is a kingdom of love. Share that love. In everything you do, treat others how you want to be treated. That's the kingdom of God. Oh! That's a good rule. That Jesus, is. that is gold. So wise. I could listen to this guy forever. Now let me tell you about the narrow gate and the wide gate. Wait, there's a gate now? The Sermon on the Mount is one of my favorite Bible passages. Does anything else happen? Yeah, Jesus taught the people a lot. Boy talking, boy. I guess that can be true. I mean, good news isn't really all that good if it's all talk. Sometimes people often talk so much. Yeah, that's true. They talk too much. That's true. <laughs> hey, how's your hot chocolate? Good. Uh, how's your coffee? coffee? Mm, I'm out. You took it to a lip. Mm, it does look good. It way! Hey. Can you guys think of a time when Jesus not only said something good, but did something good? Mary Madeline. No, no one would like Mary Madeline, but Jesus 
what? That's a good one. Zacchaeus. Nobody likes Zacchaeus. Jesus came over to Zacchaeus to eat. He did? That was a big deal. It was. Take too much. There's only so much to go around. That's it. Pass it around. Don't spill it. I need some over here. Is there any left? Uh, yeah, yeah. Here's some over here. Who still needs some? There's a bunch more over here. Awesome. Who hasn't had any? Have you already had some? Mmm, yeah, it's good. It's tasty. Good yeah. stuff. That hits the spot. <laughs> Yum. Here's a lot more. Who wants seconds? Or thirds? <laughs> here, take some more. There's even more over here. Hey, oh, man, I'm good. Hey, I, I couldn't eat another bite. Oh, I'm full. I'm nearly buried in bread and fish. Wow. <laughs> They're all full, but where, how? I think we've just witnessed a miracle. Everyone says they're full. Wow, Jesus was like a good news machine. Totally. Good news for everybody. Well, what? Not everybody saw it that way. But you said Jesus was all about good news. Well, sometimes good news for some people is bad news for others. When Jesus told the people who didn't have a lot of power that they were blessed, that made community and religious leaders, kings, and even the emperor angry and fearful. They were scared Jesus' message would make them lose their power. And they didn't want that. Nope, they did not. That happens a lot. Where did you see that happen? Well, when people think they're better or more important than others, it makes them feel powerful and control, like a bully. But power isn't the most important thing, is it? Nope, love is. You know it. Jesus lived a life of love for the people, teaching and showing that God loved them no matter who they were. 
And that's why people in power made a plan to arrest Jesus the same night he and his disciples were having a special meal. Amen. Oh, my Hallelujah, I love when you sing. More land? I believe I will. Why, anyone? Uh, yes, please. Here you go, Judas. Teacher, would you teach us that funny story again? The one about your parents losing you for the three days? <laughs> I love that one. Where have you been? We were worried sick. And then you said, Where else, where else would I be but my father's, father's house? house. <laughs> I love that. I do love that story. But tonight, there's something else I need to share with you. Something serious. This meal is more special than you know. I need you here with me because I soon will suffer greatly. Thank, God, thank you, God, for this cup of wine. Take this cup and take a, take a drink, each of you. I am not going to drink again until God's kingdom comes. God, thank you for this bread. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. This cup is poured out for you. It's a new covenant in my blood. For I always knew I was going to suffer. No one can change that. And one of you is going to betray me. No way. I'm your number one fan. No, I'm his number one fan. You know that, John. He loves Peter more than you. You will all desert me. You will all scatter and hide at the time of my suffering. But I pray that your faith will not fail you. That you will come back together to serve and strengthen one another. Jesus, you know I would go to jail for you. I would die for you. Peter. Before the sun rises tomorrow, you will pretend you don't know me three times. Yes, teacher? Wait here and, and pray. Let me go pray alone. Of course you. Thank you. Father, if, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. My friends, why are you sleeping? Try to stay awake and, and pray with me. Look, it's Judas. He's coming with armed men. They come here with their weapons drawn as if I were an armed robber. But I was with them in the temple. Day after day, 
every day, and they didn't lay a hand on me. So I guess they're gonna do what they're gonna do. These are troubling times, times of suffering. Then they arrested him? He didn't even do anything wrong. He was innocent, but that didn't matter to the people in power. Why? People with power often don't want their world to change, and Jesus' message of justice and love was changing everything, so they wanted to silence him. Talk about bad news. Bad news for Jesus and all of his followers. When Jesus was arrested, some of his disciples were so frightened that they ran away and hid. I would too. I would hide under my bed. Bad news is hard to face, especially when it's scary bad. But the peop but the power people didn't win, did they? What do you think? Well, they did kill Jesus, but first they tried to embarrass him and hurt him. Yes, they did. And then they killed him. That's the um, worst news. That's, that's a really sad and horrible story. That's the worst news. It really was. But it wasn't the end, was it? Nope. There was really good news to come. Huge good news. <laughs> Easter news. Yeah. Do you know who were the very first preachers of that good Easter news? Women. Of course they were. Which ones? We're not really sure who all was there, but we know it was a group of women who went out to visit the tomb where Jesus' body had been buried. How can we be gone? I mean, our beloved, our teacher, our friend, how can he be gone? Remember when he healed my, my son's hand on the Sabbath? Or when he stood up to the religious leaders accusing me of sin? He was always there for us, serving everyone and challenging everyone. <laughs> oh, he never lets you off the hook, that's for sure. Remember the scripture he read in the temple. He said, God has sent me to proclaim release to the captives. The people in charge didn't like that. No, they didn't. And they took him away from us. Look at the tomb. The stone has been removed. Someone has stolen his body. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. What? Jesus is risen! No way! Yahweh! You can't be serious! Did you miss our super glittery outfit? It doesn't get more serious than this! Remember what Jesus said in Galilee? He told you that he would be killed and then rise again on the third day. He did! He did say that! He totally did! Go tell the other disciples that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as I told you. This is actually happening. This is incredible. This, this is... So Jesus... Come on, we have to tell the others. Right, but they'll never believe us. It doesn't matter. God wants us to share the good news with everyone, whether they believe Not at first. Their news seemed too good to be true. The other disciples eventually figured it out. So did you see the empty tomb themselves? That's right. And later on, Jesus even appeared to many of them. He was risen. The disciples began to realize that Jesus saved the biggest news for last.
the good news that death, the biggest, baddest news, doesn't have the last word. That there's new life, hope, and possibility in the power of resurrection. Drew? How come there's still bad news? Like a what? Like a bad news like a what? There's always bad news, and sometimes, like the disciples, we feel like hiding and giving up. But after Jesus' resurrection, his disciples stopped hiding. They went out and continued Jesus' ministry. They reached out to all kinds of people who were used to hearing only bad news and taught them about love, forgiveness, and acceptance of outsiders. They cared for the sick, fed the poor, visited people in prison, and shared everything they had. They weren't just telling the good news of Jesus. They lived it. Drew, they did all of that? Did they did, and you know what? You know what? No. Say what? What? It's good news for you and me, too, because we can also live and share the good news of Jesus today.